and we can get started. Okay, the recording is started. Um, hey everyone, welcome to another Open Cluster Management Community Meetings. Today is February 17, 2023, and we are very lucky to have Fatima here to <laughs> discuss <laughs> the latency-driven, you know, um, placement, uh, place, uh, using placement uh, deployment. So Fatir, yeah. an expert at this, please yeah. take it away from me, the, the one who doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. So are you able to see my screen that I'm kind of showing? Yes, we can. Right. So okay, let me introduce myself. My name is Fatih Fatihnar. I am senior principal architect at Red Hat Global Telecom Media Entertainment Industry Vertical. This has been two and a half fantastic years at Red Hat before I was part of Google Cloud, before I was part of Verizon as a distinguished engineer and, and other Linux distro. So what I have been trying to do as a mission or I would say given assignment is to, in the TME, as you know, the latest greatest communication technology is 5G and 6G is coming in the horizon. The main the main promise in the last two generations, including 4G and now in the 5G and the coming 6G, is mainly around distributed communication infrastructure with mobile operators and fixed fixed mobile bro fixed broadband operators. And mainly, if you see all the buzzwords around 5G, mainly it has been around latency, offering low latency services to the consumers, to the enterprises. Okay. To achieve that low latency, the main idea or ideology from solution perspective is to bring computing more close to the consumers as the consumers and the enterprises. Edge computing, mobile edge computing, you know, more. In, in previous and still, we have been using edge computing heavily for static content and content caching and content delivery networks. Now we are in that I was in the last three years, we are more in the more programmable edge infrastructure, more and more. And that infrastructure has been the small compute nodes becoming more, you know, bigger compute nodes by means of CPU memory and storage capacity and network uh, interface line rates. And now we are in the age of having containerized workloads sitting at edge infrastructures, as in the sense of multiple thousands of them around the nation. And, and those are being consumed not only by the owners, but also being sold as a, as a real estate to the other people, other enterprises and people to consume that end, edge infrastructure and also offer their services over that edge infrastructure. Okay. So what I'm trying to tell you is here, if you look at the picture number three, figure number three here, this is a published article over Medium and it's gonna be different version will be published before Mobile World Congress, which is in one week on redhat.com slash architect portal is those edge infrastructures as we see it today, those are Kubernetes clusters. As in the sense of OpenShift, as in the sense of will be MicroShift, as in the sense of being rel for edge which I'm gonna to touch later. So let's focus on OpenShift managed clusters sitting at edge locations, okay? So having a lot of these clusters, ephemeral or long-living clusters is nice, good. We have some real estate to rent these clusters for containerized workloads. Is this enough to create clusters and also make them their lifecycle management? No, it's not enough. We have to offer a mechanism or a machinery to offer service orchestration over these edge clusters or managed clusters. Good, we have that capab capability with open cluster management with ACM, right? We have placement rules. We can select which, tar which cluster we need to target by means of label selectors, good. But these are all in a fashion of static labeling. Okay, how can I make my workload scheduling or service orchestration more dynamic. Okay, when you say dynamic, it means you're taking different kind of information into your consideration at your scheduling time. Your criteria is being more rich 
depending on external data that has been collected. In this particular case, top right corner, which is the DDoS file, is performing latency checks with these edge clusters with respect to interest areas. For example, I'm in Dallas, Texas. at and headquarters here. at and also, I work previously in Verizon as well. And Verizon has a big data centers in Dallas, in Austin, in San Antonio, and Houston as well. Texas, if you are not in the US, is a huge, huge state. It's like as big as a couple of countries in Europe. And we have a lot of millions of people in Texas. So what does that mean for people inside the Texas area geography, having multiple data centers that can serve them? Somebody has to perform and decide this data center with this application that I'm interested in is perfect for me by means of low latency, better user experience. This DDoS file latency is performing interest area. Say I'm in Dallas, okay, find the lowest clusters based in party's zip location or postal code location or house location. Say the closest one is two miles down the road from me, which is the Cabo Stadium nearby. There's a big at and data center. Good. What if there's an issue with that data center? Dynamic, oh, another closest data center to Fati is nearby DFW airport, another big warehouse up there. So this is dynamically measuring continuously which clusters are best fitting clusters for my particular consumers and deliver that information back to ACM continuously. This live operation, this is not one-time operation. And ACM uh, use that data to move that whatever application that I'm interested to consume, move that application between clusters. Okay, if I go summarize, ACM's talk to Didosify initiates a measurement, latency measurement based on user locations versus available clusters, number two. Didosify delivers that data, number three step, to the ACM continuously. ACM latency operator, which we, do, we wrote as a Tiger team, text that data, updates the placement rules, those static rules being updated. If there is an update, the application being moved from one cluster to another. And we have a demo of this towards the bottom of it. Okay, it's here. We have done that. This is, this is good. What does that mean for business, for enterprises, for users? Is this just a hobby project? No, this is a key functionality for us, not only for Red Hat, for for open source community as well, to make Kubernetes as well as open cluster management to offer dynamic workload placement based on user experience to improve and provide constant user experience. In this case, the user experience is based on measured latency. Okay. All right. So far, so good. Any questions? Are you with me? Are you sleeping? Uh, yeah. Is it too late? Oh. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I think that makes sense uh, to do the dynamic scheduling. Um, I'm not sure if you see there is a kind of add-on placement score API in the, in the, in the OCM. Um, I think that might help you to... So I think currently the, the whole solution is to having an operator to directly update the um, placement rules status etc to, to update the, the result uh, as an alternative another option uh, we have an api called placement add add on placement score etc uh, score so that's a per cluster score and that's a, a way that you can um calculate a score per cluster. I think that this might fit your requirement. And uh, then in the placement API, um, you can use that score to, to coordinate, to co collaborate with other kind of parameters uh, to build the final score that each cluster would have and use that to schedule the cluster uh, dynamically. Um, yeah, just my... No, no, this, uh, these are great points. Actually, these are given to us by Scott Barnes before as, hey, 
since we, we were already done by the time Scott make, made this pointing to the score, uh, as you as you referred, I have a question back to you at this stage is all the, the operation based on cluster score is still is a look like I'm not 100% sure look like to me is the one time job rather than a continuous job. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, uh, it's a continuous job. It, okay. The score will be updated continuously. Okay, yeah, so we're... score updated continuously by whom? Uh, in your case, it could be the latency operator. Um, oh, okay. I think okay. so. There was some already some um, existing work that has using the score. For example, uh, when we do the hypershift uh, scheduling, uh, we have several cluster that is to do uh, that working as a control plan of the hypershift. So when they try to schedule a management cluster which is a hypershift control plan to provision cluster uh the hypershift add-on will provide a score uh so if you have multiple control plan then the on the higher level they need to schedule for example a hypershift hypershift cluster to a certain control plan so they use kind of to 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 update the score based on the usage of uh, based on how many hypershift cluster has been uh, hosted by a certain management cluster so um that's one possible one example but we don't okay. have a, a real usage example right okay right now. yeah say uh, in this particular case i'm we are we were more interested in the measuring latency say say another one is mainly interested in the price factor of the clusters Right, mm -hmm. each cluster yeah. could be different price, and based on the price, they may move the workloads around because the pricing also alternates during the day, during the week, during the month. So my yeah. question back to you: that scoring is this a one type variable, or I can enhance that scoring type? Say scoring underscore latency, scoring underscore price. Could it, oh. could there be multiple scoring variable types? yeah it can be it's like by name so score is an api so you can oh, okay. have a score called high okay. score we have a latency score and in okay. the place in the api okay. it's you can define that i want to use both score and each score has a different weight so okay. i adjust the weight you can okay yeah so it looks like pretty straightforward to me to instead of we are using static label selector we can use a score selector and we just update that part but keep the latency operator as a, as a kind of a system integration point between OC, OCM and DDoTify. Yeah. So the question here is actually the if you look at the number one and number three, this is our integration point, right? This is the board. Yeah. This is yeah. this is where we are calling API, external API, and we are getting a web webhook response or you usually go pull full data over this. So is there any I would say work that is making this northbound. This is not a northbound. This is an east-west API. So between those, this is east-west traffic. So is there any initiative to make this OCM open cluster management to have a pluggable approach? Or no, we don't have any plugin or extension capacity on OCM to enable addition of these external data points. You can just go whatever API you're integrating into through latency operator and writing their own CRD. So I think, let me uh, summarize my question. So the question is mainly around having an SDK that is allowing people to write their modules inside OCM to embed this functionality rather than doing API integration. um i so maybe i need to understand more so all dosify is another cloud service dosify is a software as a service where you initiate latency jobs remotely over their api and get the okay. response back through again the same api with the pool Okay, so, um, so, the, so the, the, a... the challenge yeah. here is every time I do similar work, uh, there's the dosify here, and there's a I'm gonna put another work coming for the dynamic, dynamically pricing me measurement with another cloud broker, 
it's going to be another API integration, which requires another operator and CRD to be written separately and maintained separately. It's a big job rather than having a framework yeah. here inside OCM that is already offering this framework operator in a CRD, but the subcomponents of the CRD allows me to plug in different modules in it. Um, yeah, so uh, so to understand more, uh, the DOS, DOSIFI will be running uh, in the managed cluster or it's... In the managed cluster, yes. It's, it's oh, will be, it will be part of the OCM, open cluster management, ACM. Okay, I see. So how does that can communicate with the latency operator today? That latency operator it will po expose an kind of endpoint. That... Latency operator is running on the ACM hub cluster. Yeah. So but you... that's why I want I want to get rid of the latency operator because latency operator has nothing mm. to do actually with the ACM itself or ACM itself. It's a Kubernetes operator running on the ACM hub cluster. Ah, okay. Uh, so, so what you want? Uh, so currently, what you have is like uh, you have a dosify running as a kind of agent in the in the managed cluster, and then somehow they connect with latency operator. But the question is whether you want to you can get rid of the latency operator. Is that? I want to get rid of latency operator. I want to embed this, embed, put this functionality inside ACM. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure whether, uh, so possible way, one possible way is you can use, uh, you can build this as an add-on. And um, yeah, it's just my rough idea. I'm not trying to fully understand the whole architecture. Maybe I need to read lately. later. But my rough idea is that uh, you could have that to build it as an add-on so that if the dosify is running in the kind of uh, managed cluster as an agent, the add-on can help you to... No, there's no agent in this diagram. Okay. DDoSify performs API call measurements to number two is here. So DDoSify has a distributed probe network around the world in mm. over 300 cities. From each city, it performs API call to each cluster to measure the latency between the API web address to the, that whatever particular location is, say Dallas, Barcelona, Madrid, whatever. There is no agent in this picture. This is the agent okay. list. The only the, so, the software component or solution component is this latency operator here. Question again, I'm not quite sure I heard clearly the answer earlier. This mm -hmm. box is labeled DDoSify in the upper right. Mm -hmm. Is it running in any of the kube clusters uh, in red here, or is it just a separate service that are just accessed from these kube clusters? This is the ddosify.com. If you go to ddosify.com, it's a software as a service. Let me, let Thank me, you. Get, let me go show you ddosify.com. Give me a second. I, I, uh, I got my answer. Thank you. You're seeing right now the ddosify portal? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is this is you can do this latency instant test over their web UIs, or you can or you can call. Right now, for example, this is one of my one of my uh, OCP clusters. I'm gonna run a latency check from all from all the cities around the world that they have, and they have extended cities protocol. Okay, hold on. Okay. okay. Start. Uh, and this initiates the start testing, and you can save the test line. You can run it continuously, and this is also API that you can call the service. So this is the right top box in this diagram here. You see. This is it. It does five cloud here. Okay. Right now it's running the service and it's going to show me the results here. Who are the best latencies from which cities to this particular cluster that Thank I can you. use this part, particular cluster for, for those cities with lowest latency. Hopefully come back fast. Thank you. Got it. No problem. Let's see. This, this is a pretty neat service and they are extending their coverage cities and you can select your particular interest continent whatever you want to run. And you can create a scheduler, which we are creating a schedule job actually in this diagram here, creating a schedule job, as it says in here, latency measurement schedule job. Oh, here I... it is. Go ahead. I might have a proposal on on what what we we were discussing. So I think what you're trying to get at is now you're talking to this particular API service 
but mm-hmm. eventually you'll need to talk to another API server and another exactly. one. Exactly. Exactly. So you kind of want a common component on the hub cluster that can talk to different API services and gather the scores and update the update the scores on the um, on each managed cluster namespace. So yes, in, sir. Yeah, I think that's exact. That's kind of what you want. So exactly. in our placement score, if uh, if you click on the link on in, in the chat, usually the placement score is gathered from the managed clusters. So so what that means is uh, the managed clusters the ma- the managed cluster has an agent and then click some CPU usage or GPU usage or whatever and bring back the score to the hub cluster. But in mm-hmm. your case, it's different. In your case, Correct. you just need hub cluster, talk to some API servers, whatever it is, and then and now you can directly update the uh, placement score on yourself. So yes. what you I mean, what you what you're trying to suggest is we should have a a component like that. that Correct. Like, Correct. Like a, like a placement score <laughs> updater, or something like that. Q yes. Jang, do you, do you understand what um, we're we're trying to suggest? Do you uh, think yeah, that's yeah. Being helpful. Yeah. I think the one thing uh, I'm I'm not quite sure is how, so so you basically you have another API service and uh, how do you link the I mean how do you link the managed cluster to to uh, to a certain item or record in that API service we need to somehow do we need to set it in uh, some API like managed cluster saying the managed cluster is is linked to a certain record in this API service. So they so when we do the score or we can do the uh, when we calculate the score, we know for this managed cluster which item we should query in this API service. Okay, so I think you're referring to, let me share the screen again, give me a second. So your, your point is, as of today, you are calculating those scores based, based on each managed cluster has some sort of a job or daemon running and delivering that data back to ACM. That's how you have those information. The thing we are offering, or can, can I let me share screen again? Here. Okay, so h- how are we going to generalize this number one and num- number one step? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is your question. Yeah. How are we going to generalize this? Today is DDoSify API. Tomorrow is going to be a cloud cloud broker API with different different job content. For example, this job content here, number one, says that hey, go measure latencies with respect to these clusters from my interest geographies. I right thought now, I heard a slightly different question. The question I heard is, mm-hmm. uh, it looks like DDoSify is told to measure the latency to a URL, whereas the existing infrastructure in uh, ACM is concerned with the score for a cluster. So how does how what what's the mapping? How how is the association done from the managed cluster to the URL that DDoSify should test? Okay, so. The, the web UI is, is, it was a single destination cluster, but in API, we give all the managed cluster that managed cluster API points. And also we give the DOSFI that are interested countries, continents, and cities as part of this number one scheduling. So I think the, the here, obviously as open cluster management community, and define say that hey, if you want to implement or use our scoring, scoring machinery or scoring software development kit or whatever you want to call it, scoring underlying framework, scoring framework, maybe that's the right word, scoring framework. This is how you can initiate a job, and this job could have these subparameters, and those subparameters could be configurable, and you can define the returning data from that API endpoint has to honor this format. You can give, you can define your schema and YAML file, whatever you're gonna de- define. If that is matching with your well-defined format in your number three as a returning data, 
then your scoring framework can parse and use that data for updating those scores. So what I'm trying to hint you here is as you, as the community here and the, and the, and the working group, if you can describe the framework and how to use the framework with external API endpoints, the rest is up to this, whoever using that API endpoint to honor your, I would say declarations. Does it make sense? Oh uh, yeah, I think that makes sense a lot. It's right similar now. <laughs> to the CNI. It's similar to CNI, CSI, all that, right? I mean, if you look yeah, at the yeah. CNI definition, CSI definition, this is a scoring NI, whatever you want to call it, or scoring SI. <laughs> yeah, I think it's this is an interesting thing. Um, because uh, I think it will not only be the dosify. The most simpler thing is if you have a promise use or another. Cloud service monitoring, we can use the same mechanism. So, but I think the missing part here is still, um, we need an, for example, as you said, we need an API to define the, the third party API server, API endpoint and uh, the the association, the uh, uh, the the linkage between a managed cluster and uh, a certain matrix or some a, a set of matrix that you want to link to this managed cluster so we we currently still don't we don't have that api so that's something that okay. might need to explore so uh, as of today the scoring framework if i call that scoring framework inside acm is static by means of depending on an agent running on managed cluster returning that data directly to ACM scoring framework and scoring framework update those scores. This is how it is today. What we are talking here is make the scoring framework to be used not directly with the management because it's already there, to be used by external API endpoints to use other information elements to update the scores. Yeah, I um, think... I think Q Jing understand that point. Maybe okay. Q Jing is trying to mention the fact that so on the API server side, Docify or another API server, they have a sort of like a list of clusters, right? These are the list of clusters that is watching. So he I think what Q Jing is saying, how do you match that list of cluster back to the uh the OCM hub cluster or ACM hub cluster? Because no, on the that, that list has to be given by ACM. Okay. We we don't want to provision list of clusters external places. That managed cluster list or whatever interest interested managed clusters should be given by ACM to the external party for programmability and return data should be used for those given clusters for recalculating the scores or whatever updating the score, whatever you want to call it. Uh yeah. So based on the design of the score, it doesn't necessary to uh, only report it by the managed cluster. It, it actually can be uh, updated and created by any third party service as your example. It could be latency operator that doesn't need to touch any managed cluster, but directly update the score on the on for each cluster because score is uh, API on the OCM hub. Uh, it is resides in the each cluster namespace. So the only thing that the latency operator in your case is um, in the current example is that the latency operator need to check the dosify to understand the latency of a cluster and update the score on the hub cluster for this cluster. But um, again, the, I think the missing part is if we want to generalize, generalize this, Part like we don't want to have a latency operators here, but we want to have a generalized uh, API that you can define the API. So uh, the 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 kind of generalized controller will call a arbitrary cloud service and to use that service to update the score on the cluster. That part is still missing, and I think I think that will need some kind of <laughs> more thinking about how they how can we generalize such kind of api and whether 
it is possible to do that. Okay. I mean, if this community is keen on replacing static, I would say statico label selectors of Kubernetes and use scoring mechanism, this scoring mechanism will eventually have to turn into scoring framework that is that is honoring external entities to deliver some data to you and to be used by you. This is yeah. inevitable. Yes. I, I agree with you, Jen. It's, it's quite difficult to write that component. First to generalize it, but not, and then once you have some generalized list of function, you need extensibility on top of that, right? So, so you can and maybe deal with some special cases or additional modules. So I, it, it looks like a lot of work to get it. To, yeah, obviously, to get this, this, this is going to be, this is going to be, well, I have the, well, I agree and disagree. If we start with the metadata definition of the scoring framework to be publishing to external entities such as the spy cloud brokerage for whatever we're going to integrate next is, and, and then grow from out of there. Okay, this is the metadata that we're going to use through this number one and number three for external for number one is the, I would say egress metadata and the number three is the ingress metadata formats. And the set the scoring framework to parse this, since this is already standardized, what you're sending, what you're receiving by means of format and you know what you're dealing, rest is, is just plug into what you have implemented so far by means of pulling those CPU memory metrics from these clusters already. Yeah, I think that's a very interesting scenario and pretty useful in actually. Um, so do you think that it is possible that um, can create an issue in the community and maybe uh, I'm not sure whether who is interested can starting to think about the API and pro provide a proposal. If you are interested, that will be very welcome. Yeah, yeah, I can drag you to the dosify. I can drag you into the cloud brokerage firm the, that we are talking, and we can, I can drag you the Fastly, Akamai, whatever you want to use, because those companies, the existing CDN companies, likes to get in the business of programmable and networks with Kubernetes. Right now, either they're gonna write their own open cluster management and virtual placement or service orchestration by themselves, or they're gonna based on based, they're gonna depend on this OCM as an open source community. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think that we would start with an issue and uh, maybe a proposal, and then we can come back and discuss it. Look, I'm at your service, and I really like to see ACM not only used for cluster lifecycle management, but heavily for service orchestration, smart service orchestration with data-driven service orchestration. And that data has to have not only focusing on the data directly collected by OCM or APM, but from other data providers, okay? Yeah, I think I agree with that. So what is the action plan? You said you're gonna open an action. If, as I said, I'm at your service for documentation testing, I have love environment and whatever it takes, I would like to contribute as long as, as much as you want me to. Yeah, sure. I will create an issue and I will ping you on this. I'm not sure whether you are already in our Slack channel, but uh, um, I will try to ping you and then okay. we can start with issue and maybe we can cook a proposal uh, sure. later and bring it back here. That would be great. That would be great. Look, I mean, the the, the other things. It, what is the what is the alternative solution for me as a as a as a as a, as a say consumer of all open cluster manager or ACM? My other solution is to go depend on black box solutions such as Anthos, right? It's all totally the black box. There is nothing similar to what open cluster management is offering through open source community. There's nothing similar to this. And the rest of competitive sources are black box, which I have no influence, which I have no control or no able to contribute. This is, this is that's why it's so important. Yeah. 
I I agree, and I think we agree. And I think even as a as a temporary hack, you know, we do have the the placement score API available. Uh -huh. I mean, so I don't know how much how much Dossify is capable of uh, inputting into your latency operator. Like, if you can just change that to update the uh, the placement score, that's that's already halfway there. Like, just the receiving part. And then just updating the placement score. So uh, let me give you perspective on that. I'm not sure everybody. I I assume this conversation here not only Red Hatter, right? There are other companies and individuals as well as 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 part of the community. So far, we had done this work inside Red Hat, terms of our time spending and money spending. We did not hand over this work to the Dosify to own it. The reason is I want this meeting to happen to see if this work gonna take over by open source community, which we want this to be fully open source rather than we hand over to DDoSify and DDoSify own it as a, I would say their intellectual property ownership. I guess the main thing we're gonna see, which is coming, in 10 days, and I will we'll be in Barcelona launching the service and showing to tier ones and tier twos in communication domain as well as gaming industry. And there's already interest, but I really want this to be taken inside this open cluster management community as a development rather than I hand over this to an enterprise company, another commercial entity to own it. I agree. Yep. I agree. I completely agree. Because they, I mean, they are waiting. The those five founders are waiting. They say if OCM working group is not willing to take over this as open source, you know, development, they 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 are eager and hungry to take over this and make that latency operator as a DDoSify product and certified DDoSify operator in in operator hub. But so for me, I... for, for me, when I go present the solution to say Electronic Arts or Blizzard or Activision now Microsoft, and and, and the content teller and more programmable edge edge providers, I want to able to give them a choice rather than only do those five. I want to give them, hey, you can use this with another API vendor that is compliant with this not the egress egress schema or metadata definition. I want to give options as a data data provider side. I don't want to jail my customer to only use DDoS5. I want them to use, say, Grafana, Grafana Labs. That is similar to performing similar testing. I understand. And if you mentioned DDoS5 is willing to contribute something to latency operator, right? So why why can't they why can't we ask them? Hey, why don't you, why don't you try to <laughs> contribute to the community open source as well to head towards this development that we we're talking yeah, that's, about? That's, that's possible. Yeah, that's, that's not possible. that's not a bad look on okay. their part as well, right? I yeah, think oh, that that's not a bad idea. That's a good idea. Actually. That's a very good yeah. idea. Yeah, I think I think we can do that. So as a follow up, if you want, as a follow up, if you want, I can reach out to the the justify. VP of engineering and the, the CEO and tell him that, hey, OCM community is keen to continue to make this part of open cluster management as a scoring framework capacity or capability. And the, the work we had done on inside Red Hat, you can take over that with as long as you follow OCM guidance with the scoring as a follow-up develop. Yeah, I think that's a that's a great okay. idea because because the problem is we draft a proposal, we have an mm. enhancement, everything set up. We still need the resources, right? Yeah, yeah. And if, okay. we, and if we have the design, we provide the resources, then it's good for both. It's good for DDoSifying, participating mm -hmm. in open source, good for us gaining another participant in our community. Okay. Thank you so much. That's that's a great idea. I think that's a good action plan. Okay. So but I need I need your guidance. So I'm going to bring them in front of you, but you need to provide a guidance because at that point, you should have a little bit of clear understanding how the scoring framework will be look like so we can guide them properly to write 
they rewrite this latency operator based on the scoring approach. Yep, I think okay. we'll we'll work on the the enhancement of the proposal. Oh. Yep, Kijan, right. <laughs> am I am I over promising? Sorry, <laughs> go ahead, Kijan. Sorry. Oh no, I think that's a good idea. I think that we can start from it there. Okay. I can I can definitely bring another player for the same latency scope. I can br bring Grafana Labs. Great, that's that's great. All right, all right. We have an action plan. Any questions? Any last minute questions or concerns? Thank you so much for bringing this topic. Thank you for the time given and opportunity to express or explain ourselves rather than keeping this black box. And hopefully this is going to be really exciting development to yep. have it inside the open class management. Yeah, we look for it. But uh, before we end the call, I just want to give an opportunity to Q Chang. I think, I think he might have some announcement to make as well for the community or just, just some topic. Kijan, please go ahead. Uh, I don't know. I don't have it. So... Oh, I, oh, sorry. <laughs> I saw you took off the mic, so I thought you wanted oh, to no, talk. No. Sorry. No. All right. OK, if not, thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, yep, we're two minutes off, but thank you all for joining. That was a great presentation. Thank you all again. Take care, Thank everyone. you. If, if you're you. coming to Barcelona for MWC, feel free to ping me. I'll be there. Or any event you're going to attend, KubeCon, whatever, let me know. For sure, for sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye.